Hey everybody, how's it going? Hope you're having a great day. So today I'm going to be doing a video that I honestly never wanted to do, which is discussing why it is that I do not want to purchase a product from a company that's gone out of their way to talk about how they care about sustainability, how they care about creating devices in an ethical way, and in my opinion, they have uh, in some small ways stopped doing so. I'm not saying to be clear that they're worse than every other company out there. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying that this puts a really, really bitter taste in my mouth when people ask me why I'm not recommending that particular product. And that particular product today that I'm talking about is the Fairphone. With the Fairphone 4, they decided to get rid of the headphone jack. But not only did they decide to get rid of the headphone jack, that's not just what bothers me. What bothers me is the bullshit reasoning that they gave for it, in my opinion. They have a page on here on how they're not giving you an audio jack because this is going to reduce e-waste over the long run, which makes it um, more green or whatever. And they also discuss that in this video. And something that I'm particularly sensitive to is greenwashing. I do believe in having a clean environment. I'm more than happy to be kind to the environment, and I'm happy to see things move forward. We're using less plastic or more green energy or anything like that. But I don't like greenwashing bullshit. So I would like to go over this video, their description as to why it is they got rid of the headphone jack, and just talk about it piece by piece as he, in my opinion, lies into the camera for a minute and a half. So let's do it. For those that don't know, an audio jack is a specific connector that you use with your headphones. Um, for us, it has been a design decision. So in order to make this phone last for five and even more years, uh, to, together with our five years warranty, it is important that we remove any part of the phone that may break. And since the audio jack... Uh okay, so first thing to go over here is that he says that they are doing this to remove any part of the phone that can break so that they can be able to offer the warranty that they offer. So let's say that this is true. Hypothetically speaking, let's say it's actually true that it's easier to warranty the phone if they remove the headphone jack. Why is it that I'm paying over $600 for a product that's missing functionality that I can get in a $140 Moto G just so that you don't have to offer as long a warranty? This is starting to give me $250 Linus backpack vibes here. I don't like that. I don't like that, that line of thinking where we're going to remove features and functionality so that you don't file warranty claims on us. But I still lean towards the idea that that's bullshit. I ran a repair shop that did this shit for 13 years. I know exactly how many people are showing up for charge ports versus headphone jacks. And for every 50 people that would show up to get a charge port replaced on an iPhone, there'd be one person that's there for the headphone jack. This is not exactly what's creating a lot of the warranty. The charge port creates a lot more warranty than the actual headphone jack. But further, let's say that you get rid of the jack. What do you think people are going to use as a headphone jack? They're going to use a dongle, and then they're going to plug it into the USB-C port. So let's say that I plug in my charger 10 times a day, and I plug in my headphones 10 times a day. Now I have two different ports getting used 10 times a day. If you get rid of the headphone jack and I have to use a dongle, now I have one port that I'm using 20 times a day. So I don't even see how this fixes anything. This is not actually gonna fix any of the problem. It's just a way for either A, for you to reduce warranty claims by removing functionality that really matters to me, which is bullshit, or B, it's not about any of that at all. It's just about you saving 50 cents on your cost while you're producing the phone, which to me is even worse. Or C, which is the ultimate conspiracy theory that shows in my comments every now and then, that they started selling Bluetooth buds right around the time that they got rid of the headphone jack. Imagine that. Let's go back to the video and continue playing it. And that can also be done via your charging port, with the so-called USB-C, so the one that you also use for, uh, for charging. We said, hey, let's bring those two functions together, and then let's just put it into one uh, yeah, USB port or connector. The USB port that we are using, of course, as you are used with our phone, uh, with our phone in general, is highly repairable, so it's super easy to change, and it's much more sturdy and durable than the classic uh, uh, mini jack connector. So we hope that with this decision, you can actually have a phone that lasts much longer. Another argument as well is Okay, so if the ports are easily repairable on this phone, if the whole point of a Fairphone is that it's easily fixable, then why are you leaving out functionality that lots of people are begging to have back that would make your product a differentiator in a marketplace dominated by Apple and Samsung because then you'd have to repair it and then you'd have a warranty claim and my God, our phones are so hard to open, we wouldn't want to have to actually replace that. If it's easy to replace the headphone jack, then why do we care? Like, again, the entire point of this product is let's make something that's easy to repair, that is easy to work on, and then simultaneously decline customers' features because those features may break. This is ridiculous. That the, the audio jack is normally a typical place where dust uh, gets in and also water gets in. So that's also a good way to uh, remove another vulnerability uh, of the phone. Plus, I will add that Fairphone 4 is a pretty complex product. So it's a 5G product. Okay. The headphone jack is a place where liquid can get in. You know where else is a place that liquid can get in? The charge port. The charge port. Apple got rid of the headphone jack with the iPhone 7. 
I have a full-time employee, soon to be two full-time employees, that do nothing but work on iPhones for data recovery. And 99% of the iPhones that come in for data recovery come in for data recovery because of liquid damage. And these are phones that have never been opened before. Liquid still gets into these phones even when they get rid of the headphone jack. That's bullshit. And you have phones that do have headphone jacks that are fairly liquid resistant. Motorola has some phones that are fairly liquid resistant with a headphone jack. Samsung has phones that are fairly liquid resistant with a headphone jack. My Samsung S10e has taken swims more times than I care to admit. And it's totally fine because it is a fairly liquid resistant phone in spite of the fact that it has a headphone jack. That's BS. And hypothetically speaking, let's say that it is considerably less liquid resistant as a result of the fact that it has a headphone jack. You don't cover liquid damage at the warranty anyway. So why do you care? Now, they claim over here, again, that this is to keep e-waste out of the land. But look at this. It reduces e-waste in the long run. The fuck it does. How many of these things, how many of these pieces of shit Bluetooth headphones that you can get give you a replaceable battery? This is a Shure RMCE BT2. This cost about $150 when it came out. Not for headphones, for the Bluetooth dongle. Just the dongle without the actual headphones you connect to. $150. Good luck finding a battery to this thing. Next up, will you get something like, uh, what else do we have here? We have this little high buoy, whatever the F you call it, right over here. You can get this for like 60 bucks on Amazon. It's another MMCX adapter, so you could attach any MMCX headphone of your choice to it and use it. Where do you get a battery to this? Where do you get a battery to this when it dies in one year? You don't. You don't because the manufacturers don't sell it to you. 99% of the manufacturers of Bluetooth headphones out there will tell you to go kick sand and pound rocks if you ask them to get a replacement battery for this product. If anything breaks, they're not fixable. However, however, with these headphones over here, when my wire breaks or my 3.5 millimeter jack on the end breaks, I can just go online, buy a new Neutrik one for three to seven bucks, solder it on myself, and I got a working set of headphones again. Avatar Studios, when I worked there in 2007 and 2008, had Fostex headphones from the 80s that still worked, that they fixed on a regular basis because they were actually repairable, which is more than you can say for most Bluetooth headphones on the marketplace. So if you actually cared about being green, then you would not be pushing people to adopt technology that is anything but green. Now I know better and I'm more sensitive about buying this Bluetooth bullshit, knowing that, again, love Bluetooth, love the idea of wireless, hate the idea that I can't fix any of it. Uh, it like, this, like, fuck off with this green shit. It's, it, it's not more green. No, no, that, that's bullshit. Again, when you say, oh, oh, there's less chance of water getting in the phone, I have full-time employees that do nothing but go through iPhones that are supposedly liquid resistant for data recovery. No headphone jack. Ugh. Yeah, continue. Product with a lot of antennas and we needed a lot of space inside the device. So anything that we could really uh, take out to gain that space to be able to provide uh, space to all those other functions was uh, very important. So. Okay. Now he says he needs to put space in the device. The Fairphone is an insanely niche product. Uh, again, I wish more people would adopt the purchasing things that are more sustainable, that are more repairable, and so on and so forth. It's a very niche product. If you're going to buy this and you're going to pay a premium and you're not going to be getting a processor or whatever that's exactly as fast as what you could get in a flagship iPhone or something, you're probably going to be a little bit more accepting of the phone being this much bigger than everybody else's. The type of customer that's going to buy this is not going to care that the device is this much bigger as a result of antennas. People were able to fit antennas into phones with headphone jacks smartphones with headphone jacks for 10 effing years. And they were pretty small and they were pretty slim. So I just don't buy that either. At the end of the day, I don't even think that the guy doing the video buys it. He looks down a couple of times. He said, yeah, once he's going, uh, um, uh, um, the entire time because he doesn't buy what he's saying. And I don't blame him for not buying what he's saying. I blame whoever decided to put this guy on camera to explain their bullshit design decisions to the people that are going to be complaining about it. This here is a dongle. It is a dongle that allows me to plug a microphone or headphones as well as charging adapter into the phone at the same time. And I wanted to show it on stream, but I couldn't because I couldn't find it. Do you know where it was? It was in my washing machine because it fell out of the pockets of one of my pants because that's what dongles do. They get lost and they're annoying. 
So it's why I prefer not to use them. Now you may ask, Lewis, why are you living in the past? Why do you care about wireless uh, versus wired or any of this stuff? You know, there are lots of different uses for a headphone jack, and it's not just for headphones. Here, this is a little Rode shotgun microphone that you can plug into a phone if it has a headphone jack. And one of the reasons that it's really difficult to use this with a dongle, if you even want to use it with a dongle, is because it's actually designed to clip onto the phone with this little thing over here. And it's really hard to arrange that when you have a dongle. It's got this nice little windscreen over here. I try to avoid calling it a dead C-A-T in case Mr. Clinton is listening. It's one of those terms that's just kind of hostile if you're a cat owner. But it has one of these nice little windscreens over here so that when I'm doing real estate videos, like what I was doing in 2019, I could walk around and show you stuff even when it's really windy outside and you don't hear wind. If I'm doing a bike video, I could be going at Redacted to protect Lewis from Letitia James. Um, I could be going pretty fast on one of the um, on my e-bike, and it could be very windy outside, and you can still hear what I'm saying because I have this microphone. Now, I can't plug this microphone into the new phone because I don't have that ability anymore. I'd have to use something like a dongle, which is quite annoying. I like being able to have this type of basic functionality, and I don't like it being taken away for what, in my opinion, is not a good reason. Now, I know what you're thinking, Lewis, why don't you just use a Bluetooth microphone? Well, if you have your headset connected via Bluetooth, even if you are able to listen back to music and lossless sound quality, you're not able to transmit from the microphone to the phone and lossless sound quality. If you take a listen of what it sounds like when you use Bluetooth for recording a good microphone versus wired, it sounds like absolute crap. It sounds like a 64 kilobit per second MP3 file from 1999. It's just really, really bad. It butchers the sound quality in a way that does not when you're listening. However, even if it didn't butcher the sound quality, many pieces of software are not even made for that on Android. If you plug in a 3.5 millimeter microphone or you plug in a USB-C microphone, it will work. However, if you try to use a Bluetooth microphone in something like the YouTube app or the camera app, it just doesn't have an option. Like the YouTube app, if you're streaming, there's no option to select a Bluetooth microphone. There's no option in the default camera app on many of these devices to utilize the audio from a Bluetooth microphone. Even if you could, it sounds like crap, but it doesn't allow you to. So this is one of those areas where we've supposedly moved forward and with progress, but you actually move backwards because you went from being able to have a high fidelity microphone plugged into the device to a 64K sounding MP3 file which is really very disappointing. I don't believe this was done to make the device more liquid resistant. I don't believe this is done because they care about warranty claims. If they actually did it because they cared about warranty claims, again, the sheer number of people walking into our store for charge port replacements versus headphone jacks, insane. So if they actually did that just for warranty replacements, it's either A, they designed a shit headphone jack, or B, they're seriously fucking petty. If they did it because they didn't care about warranty, and that's just a lie, that means that they did it to cut costs, which seriously sucks when you have a premiumly priced product, or B, they did it to sell more Bluetooth buds, because again, they started selling Bluetooth buds right around the time that they got rid of the headphone jack. Surprise, surprise. So long story short, I think this is a shitty thing to do. Now, I know what you're going to say. No, know what I'm going to see in the comments. Lewis, you're an asshole. They're at least better than everybody else. Yeah, but everybody else doesn't really try to give to, to, to like market to this particular niche segment of the population that cares about things like repairability and sustainability. But they do. When you buy an iPhone, you're expecting to buy a phone from a douche company. When you buy a Galaxy, you know you're buying a phone from a douche company. When you buy a Pixel, you know you're getting a phone from a douche company. The whole point of buying a Fairphone is you're getting something that's sustainable, that respects the user, that is, I don't know, the, whole, you know, the organic free-range phone, all that kind of stuff. You're buying something that's supposed to respect you. So when they do that, it cuts a little deeper than when... It, it, it comes from somebody like Apple or Samsung. You expect better than them, so you get disappointed by it. I'm not saying that everything else that they've done to contribute towards making a more sustainable product is useless because of this, but as long as that bullshit reasoning is up on their website, I can't give them an endorsement. I can say that they suck less than some other companies, for sure, and again, I can root for them to do better. I think we should all root for them to do better, but like, I'm not, I'm not gonna get excited about getting a fair phone. I'm just not. It's like just knowing that I paid that much money to get something that doesn't have a headphone jack so that they could avoid like one in 10,000 warranty claims for the headphone jack. Like it just puts a bitter pill in my mouth. And I'd honestly just rather buy something used from another manufacturer. So at least they're not making money off of me directly than buy a Fairphone new knowing that I bought. It's just something about it just doesn't sit right with me. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. See you all in the next video. Bye now.